In 2018, we saw many ups and downs in the oil market. Now, the question is, what's in store for 2019? Today, we speak with Halima Croft, Global Head of Commodity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets, about the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. I am Mash'al Kindi, and this is Adnoc Insights. Halima, welcome to Adnoc Insights. Thank you so much for having me. We saw a lot of fluctuations in the global oil market in 2018. In your view, what are the key trends that are emerging and that we need to look out for in 2019? I mean, we saw tremendous volatility, particularly in Q4 of this year. I mean, we had a situation where Brent prices dropped by almost 40% from October to year end. And that's given you know, investors a lot of concern about sort of what direction we are going in terms of the oil market. Now, we're actually pretty constructive on oil for 2019. We actually think the OPEC cuts of 1.2 million barrels will be largely effective in draining the inventory overhang that was developing. But there's still these headwinds that we're concerned about in terms of demand. We are watching closely what is happening with Chinese demand. Slowing auto sales is something we're watching. We obviously are attuned to the issue of what a trade war would mean for demand. But we're looking at the supply situation. We think that is in a constructive place. And we still see demand you know, growing at about 1.2 million barrels year on year. So overall, we see oil Brent prices averaging about $68 in 2019. In your view, what are the key downside risks? I mean, the key downside risks, I mean, the biggest one would be a global recession. And what we really saw, I think, in the last week of the year, recessionary concerns, concerns about, you know, policy from Washington weighing on oil prices. I mean, one of the things that I talked about the last week of the year was, I think it was really the concern about the demand side that was weighing on prices, not the supply side. Focusing on the Middle East. Sure. What do you think, in your view, are the key geopolitical issues that may affect uh, oil price in 2019? I mean, it's a region that I love, a region I love spending time in. I think, you know, one of the biggest uncertainties in the oil market in 2019, in 2018 was the issue of Iran sanctions. I think there had been a view in the market when the White House was talking about no exemptions for importers of Iranian oil, and then it turned out there were eight exemptions granted to importers. I think that was one of the catalysts for the sell-off that we saw in November. So I think people will be watching in the market How does this U.S. policy, how does a sanctions policy towards Iranian oil, how does it play out over the course of the year? And that's a really important fundamental question for the market. There are always these sort of geopolitical concerns about disruption, about unrest in the region. But I think the Iranian barrel question will be a very, very important issue in terms of where are we in terms of the supply picture. What are your thoughts on Adnox um, oil and gas 4.0 concept? No, I think it's a, I think it's a great concept because I think it's really important, you know, for national oil companies that really have the stewardship of the nation as their top priority to really be thinking about, you know, stretching the value of the barrel, really thinking about your diversification efforts. I think one of the most exciting things that I think Adnox is doing is really in terms of trying to attack the best young talent. And I think that is the real challenge for the industry as a whole, is how do you sell to a bright young university leaver the opportunity to work in this industry as opposed to going into the technology sector, which I think a lot of people want to go to the Googles and Facebooks. So when I look at what Adnoc is doing, they're essentially taking some of the most exciting practices and innovation from Silicon Valley and bringing it to a national oil company. And I think that potentially makes it a very attractive place to work for young people. What are your thoughts on Adnox strategy and how it prepares us as a company to, um, for the challenges and, and opportunities in 2019 and, and even in the long-term future? I mean, going forward, I think partnership is one of the most exciting things that you do. I mean, what you learn in terms of technology transfer, in terms of best practices from partnering with you know, other companies, having these companies have real skin in the game as well, I think is very important for the development of these projects that are going to be increasingly challenging as well. I mean, one speaker today from Adnoc talked about the age of easy oil is over. So having these partnerships to help you unlock these more challenging resources, I think is essential. Adnoc is a national oil company. In your view, uh, how do you see as, or, or, or what does the national oil company of the future look like to you? 
I mean, the national oil companies have such an important mandate. I mean, you are the driver of prosperity for your nation. I mean, your shareholder is every citizen of this country. So I think that's why thinking about 4.0, thinking about embracing innovation, you know, staying ahead of the curve and not being caught by disruptions in technology, I think that's so essential because, again, you have such an important mandate. I mean, the prosperity and security of the nation is in your hands. So again, everything that you're doing in terms of the talent side, you know, again, having the best and brightest minds in this country want to work for this company, I think that is essential. What are the key factors where you uh, where you see that um, NOCs uh, need to look at beyond IOCs when it comes to transformation, when it comes to uh, to going to the the, the more um, uh, advanced model of operation? I mean, I think again, you know, IOCs, you know, they do they're answerable to shareholders, and so I think there have been this perception in the market that NOCs could afford to be in the past you know, not quite as vigilant. Uh, there wouldn't be the same demand for excellence. And I think one of the things that's been very important and sort of the message that we get about the ad hoc strategy is there is an incredible emphasis on excellence and delivering performance and on cost efficiency. And those are not the things traditionally that we've thought about with NOCs. So I think evolving in terms of having the best practice in deploying capital and attracting talent and the relentless quest for efficiency and innovation I think is increasingly important important to NOCs who really want to help their country pursue the prosperity project. In your view, where would you put ADNOC when it comes to um, its transformation or when it comes to um, being the working towards being the NOC of the future? I, mean, I think where you have really sort of set a new benchmark is in terms of your partnerships with international companies. I think also in terms of attracting the best international talent. I think that is something where, you know, traditionally when we think about NOCs, we don't think about them necessarily going beyond borders and finding the absolute best talent, basically being able to draw from the best firms globally and to say, come help us participate in this project of innovation. And so I do think that everything that's being done, for example, on digitization, on big data, you know, I think that makes it a very exciting place to work. And just the message that we're open for partners and we're open to hire the best talent anywhere in the world, any gender, any ethnic or, you know, origin, the idea that that is part of who you are, the kind of openness to the best talent. Halima, thank you for sharing your insights. Thank you so much for having me.